Good morning tubes. Bruce here. Well today we've got a, a Husqvarna electric start self-propelled lawnmower but it doesn't electric start anymore. Uh, it will a couple of times after the battery's been plugged in it will electric start but uh, the battery falls off to about 10 volts and then it won't start anymore so it, basically the battery has just given up the uh, ability to hold a charge. So we'll just take it apart and show you what we're going to do. So this is the charging port right here. It's a polarity sensitive connector. I call that a polarity sensitive Molex connector because that's the kind I used to deal with when I worked. But it, anyway, it's just the, the red is the positive and the black is the negative. And you just plug your charger into there and you can't get it wrong because of that little flat bottom there. So I'm just going to take these two screws off the top. They are a Torx or a flathead, but I've got a Torx, and this one is a Torx 20, T20. So we'll just take the screws off the top here. Oh yes, and it has a connector underneath here to unplug. Like that, that just goes to the battery. Hopefully you can see that. And then this whole thing just rotates back. So here it is, the battery is inside here, and that'll be two 5 16 uh, screws to come off there, and then this will just pull off, I think. So we'll just head over to the bench now and completely and finish disassembling this. Now this should just, it's just caught on the edge there, if you see this slides forward, and now the battery should pull out. Excuse me, sorry about that. And there we have the old battery. Now the new battery is a little bit different, I have I found it already, and it's slightly bigger but it will fit. We're just going to use uh, female blue number 16 connectors on the battery terminals. So this should just lay in here like that, and then go back together like that once we have the wires connected. But I, what I'm going to do is this connector I believe is also part of the problem. If you look down inside here the, the uh, red one is further recessed than the black one and uh, also I, I was uh, fiddling with this before it pulls out. So being as we already have a connection here, a connection here and uh, eventually a future connection to the studs on the battery I'm going to eliminate both of these and I will just put spade connectors on the end of whoops, on the end of these like that and then we'll splice onto the other end of the connector that's on the lawnmower. We'll show you that in a bit. Hey guys, <coughs> I've connected the spade connectors to the lugs on the battery and I've just put a couple of rolls of tape around here to eliminate any uh, any movement when the battery is sitting in here. Plus it's going to be sitting upside down like that so I wanted to, to hold the connectors like that. I could have installed the battery this way but then I was afraid of any movement on a lawnmower. Like if you had lots of vibration they would fall out eventually. Although they do have a small, if you look right there, there's a small indent in the connector which also goes into that little hole on the on the battery. So that is it little clips in there. You can actually hear it. So, <coughs> so I'm gonna stick it in like that with the wires coming out this pre prearranged hole. I'll turn this over. And then we can install our two 
5 16 nuts right here. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> yeah, new take twos in YouTube. So that's really solid in there. So now we're going to install this and then we'll do our splice which eliminates this old connector after. I want to show you something. If you look right here, the plastic has been broken out by somebody over tightening this. So I've added a washer to make this screw just a tiny bit wider to hold in there. So I'm so sorry for the shaking. I'll show you before and after. Okay. There. So the washer is just to mix the screw a little wider to hold the plastic together. So now all I have to do is to snip this off and splice the, re the uh, red and blacks in like that. We'll use a piece of heat shrink. And then that eliminates one more connection, which is always a good thing on an on a outdoor device. Okay, so the battery is installed in the handle. The wires are coming out and they are connected to the battery. So if I took a meter to this, there would be 12 volts on the end. So you don't ever want to cut them both at the same time or work with them uh, both exposed because you can short the battery out and cause yourself or uh, the battery some damage. It is only 12 volts, but there's quite a bit of current if you were to short this little fella out. So now I have spliced the black first and when we're done with the solder, we will slide this over and uh, we'll do the heat shrink on it. So this is a really nice little tool. I've had this for years. Uh, it's a cordless soldering iron. It works on butane. And not only does it work as a soldering iron, but you can also heat the heat shrink with it, which is pretty darn cool. So I've cut, also, going to interrupt myself, I've cut the uh, connector end off of this one, because that's the one that made it with that other one that was broken. So first thing we'll do is get the red one out of here, and we will solder up this black connection. Okay, let's get this soldered up. The reason why I turned it around is so, so the vent, this is the vent, it doesn't blow at you. <laughs> it's only awkward because I'm trying to make it so you can see. There it goes. Now you'll notice I'm adding solder to the top of the connection, not to the heat of the iron. Then you'll know that you've got a good connection all the way around. Now I cheat a bit. Don't do this at home. I just lick my finger. And that just cools it faster. Now I can slide the heat shrink over. That's about the center. Now this is kind of neat. So you can use a lighter to shrink this if you didn't have this little guy. It's windy in my garage. Like that. Or I can use the vent on the soldering iron. You're still watching, right? Good. Now we'll just do the red one. Now there's no danger of electric short. <clears throat> yes, I took a nick out of my finger yesterday. Okay. Start a little solder on the tip of the iron. Get it into the material. Wait for a little heat transfer. There we go.
So just being near the heat, this has sh sh shrunk somewhat. So I'll pull it back until we're completely cool. There we go. So there's sheet shrink on either side of the connection. And away we go. Voila. All right, tubes. Small engine demo time. Primer three times. One, two, three. Close the breaker or whatever you want to call it, and I'll hit the switch. Now I'll just take a voltage on this charging cord here. Okay, right, here we go. 13.05. So there's nothing wrong with that. And then the little charger comes with it. It only puts out an amp. That's all you need to charge that little battery. It's not like a car. And it's polarity sensitive like we showed you. And then you just plug that into the, into the wall and away we go. So, BTHV1 over and out.